I just bought the book Bushcraft by Morris Kahansky, and I decided that instead of just putting it on the shelf, I would read it and try to practice the skills inside. In order to motivate myself to do so, I'm starting a little outdoors book club on my channel. The purpose of these videos is to share information, uh, practice. I'm hoping to learn a lot in the process and hopefully you will too. One other thing, I'm not an expert. If I was an expert, I wouldn't need to buy a book. You'll get to see what an average guy from Iowa does trying to practice these skills. You don't have to be a superman to go outside. Welcome to episode 13. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to chop, chop down a tree and try to get done some other axe work. We'll see how much we can get done today. Uh, I know I've said it before, but do not take any of this information as coming from an expert. I am not trying to instruct you in safe axe use. If you want to learn how to use an axe, find an experienced teacher. Finally, felling trees is one of the most dangerous things you can do in the woods. Do not attempt this. We're uh, clearing the rubbish away from the base of this tree here. Now you can see um, it's uh, leaning, but it's a uh, it's actually a damaged tree. Um, the top of it is is uh, split, and this this tree doesn't probably have a lot of useful life left in it. Uh, and there are, are at least two healthy trees around it. Um, so this is a pretty good candidate to come down. Uh, the wind is coming directly from my back and the tree is leaning that way. And I think it'll fall that way. Now the, the couple things that might screw us up are that the top branch there is uh, in contact with that other tree and um, as it's falling it may catch and spin this tree into that one. If that happens it's not the end of the world. Um, the other thing I'm looking for here and I'll take my axe and hit the trunk of the tree but I don't I don't want to get chopping on that and have a branch fall down and crack me in the head. Uh, another thing I'm looking for is when that starts to fall where do I go and I'm going right here there's a nice safe spot to sit here away from the the tree and another thing I'm looking at is I'm going to clear all of this uh, debris out from the base here so that nothing gets in my way when I'm chopping and uh, so that we have a nice unobstructed and hassle-free experience here. I'm just going to hit, hit this and see what if anything falls and nothing seems to be falling so theoretically I should be safe from that. Now uh, there's a couple rules that he talks about in the book and that's that this is a you want to stand an axe length away from the tree and you don't want to start your cuts any higher than one foot off the ground. Now I know there's a lot of people that say you should swing up higher because uh, you know it's easier on your back and this and that but mainly what I'm concerned with is trying to uh, chop low enough that if I miss with the axe it goes into the ground and not into my foot and so I'm going to follow along with the book on that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a a cut this is called the undercut um, to cut on this side of the tree the direction that it wants to fall and we're going to make it um, no more than you know about a foot off the ground there I'm just kind of marking where I want to go and it's going to be angled at 45 degrees and what I'll do is I'll make one series of chops across the bottom and then come a little bit on top of it. A couple other safety things um, he, he talks about the last bit of your distance your hands should should be parallel with the axe and the axe should be parallel with the ground. Now I saw a US Forestry Service uh, video on uh, how accidents happen when you're doing this 
and they say that all of the accidents that they've ever seen the axe it never happens if the axe is above parallel to the ground it always happens if it's lower and uh, so their rule is they never let the axe come um, past parallel and so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to honor that and uh, we'll see what happens the final thing he talks about and this tree doesn't quite make the grade so you'd want to chop something down smaller than this but if you don't have experience felling trees you should start with a tree that you can wrap your arm around and touch your left shoulder and this is almost there but it's a little bit bigger than um, probably what you would want to do so uh, I think that's all I'm supposed to talk about and I'll get started so here goes you're supposed to aim with the heel of the axe this is the toe that's the heel so you're supposed to aim with the heel of the axe I'm standing one axe length away from it and I'm gonna swing in at 45 degrees and see what happens here I'm gonna back up a little bit and take another chunk out and what I'm doing here is I'm swinging for accuracy I'm not swinging hard uh, you, you want the axe to go where you're you're swinging it now I'm going to take one more chip a little closer that way again I'm going to try my best to swing accurately and not let that go too much beyond parallel now the next cut I'm going to do is up just a little bit and I'll come come across a little ways here a little bit more and uh, this brings me to a point I'm swinging down he says in the book not to try to swing up and make a V because if you do that the axe is liable to slip and hit you in the forehead so I'm going to keep my 45 degree angle make one more cut there and now we'll go up a little bit you can clear the chips out just by chopping in a little bit if you need to I'm going to go up a bit See, when the axe goes down, it's not going into my foot, it's going into the ground instead. So, it is frozen wood, and I'm getting some hits that are not perfect, but I'm not getting injured. And that was the whole idea of setting it up this way. come up just a bit <sighs> and, and what you want to see is a lot of big chunks not a whole bunch of little tiny chunks you want nice big ones and um, I'm gonna keep doing this and the idea is I want a divot out of this that goes for this tree a third to a half of the way um, across the trunk here So now you can see um, it's just one big 45 degree cut into the base of the stump. Stump is real kind of ugly looking, but uh, that's okay. And I'm between a third and a half of the way through the diameter of the trunk. 
Now at the request of the landowner, I decided to make the notch more on this side of the tree, trying to cheat as much as we can away from it falling into that tree. Uh, I don't know if it'll work, but at least we tried. And now the next step will be going around to the back of the tree. So now on this side, um, what you don't want to do is chop it off at exactly the same level. You want to come up just a little bit from where you were before. And uh, what that does is it'll make, uh, it'll make a little lever or uh, I'll get the technical term for it and put it in as a title, but it'll make a little ledge here so that when the tree starts to fall, it won't um, be as likely to fall back because there'll be a little bit more elevation on this side. Uh, so, and I've got my escape plan right to there. As soon as this starts to go, uh, I'm ready. And I, my uh, friendly landowner and cameraman is also aware of the plan and we're gonna try to do it safely here. So, here goes. Again, same thing, 45 degree cuts. All the way across best I can. Now I'm going up from the first cuts a little bit to get a little bit of a space cleared out. I'm gonna clean some chips out so it looks sexier. And we're getting close here. Just uh, when you get winded, stop, catch your breath. Um, because when you're tired is when you're gonna make mistakes. And I'm just reminding myself of the proper form here. One handle width away from the tree and I'm gonna try to make it. I know the video is gonna show that I was not perfect, but I'm gonna try to make it so that it doesn't break parallel on me. If that means I have to bend my knees a little bit too, and I'll I'll work on that here. So, aiming with the heel. So you can see what we're down to here. Big egg piles of chips everywhere. Just a little bit left, holding this sucker up. A few more chops. All right, this sucker has to come down. I'm getting hot. <laughs> I can hear it wanting to go. Right there. Exactly what we thought would happen did happen. It hung on the uh, tree up there. I'm keeping a sharp eye on it. But it hung up there and then went down that way. Missed our standing tree. So that's felling a tree. So now I've uh, switched axes to what the axe book describes as the perfect limbing axe. And uh, in the book, um, Moores talks about you want to swing upwards except for one kind of I think he said black spruce you don't want to do it that way but when you're limbing you want to swing upwards and you want to make your cut so that it is uh, 
as close to the trunk as possible so that you don't have um, skips and things like that. And then if you have a bigger limb that you're cutting off, he shows four cuts, one straight down, one like this, one like this, and then another one straight down to, to get that uh, wedge out of there. And uh, I'm just gonna try this the old, uh, that way, because this, this is ash and it, it looks a little, this is pretty dang sturdy wood. Uh, he must have different trees up there. I don't think I can get through that with one swing. So here goes again. Um, the, all the methods he shows in the books are chopping like this on, on like this branch. So the log is between you and the branch. Well, this is really the only thing that needs to be limbed is this and that. And I'm lazy right now, so I'm just gonna limb this off. And same rules apply. I'm gonna try my best to make sure that the ax doesn't go um, more than parallel to the ground. And if you have to bend your knees, that's fine. See, I no way I would have gotten through that with one swing. So I took it off nice and, and even with the uh, with the trunk there. And then the book, he says that the most efficient way to section these is to make two opposing V cuts. Uh, one here and then switch to the other side and make it here. Now notice when you swing your ax, you want the log between you and the ax. And uh, I'm gonna show like a real ancient and super technique that probably even Moores doesn't know. And this is called the Iowa Farmer Technique of sectioning a log. And uh, hopefully we can get this to work. Come on. <laughs> We'll just do a little after action report of the axe here. This is the uh, Grands Force Brooks American Felling Axe, 35 inch handle. Went right through this 18 inch ash without much difficulty. And I don't, there were at least three times where the axe glanced off the tree and went into the ground, but I don't, I don't see any major damage. It's still pretty sharp. I wonder how that works, you know, you get an axe and it's like fire, water, air, and dirt. F***ing magnets, how do they work? But uh, anyway, the, you know, how does it stay sharp like that? I don't know, but I'm gonna go home and maintain it back to its uh, shaving sharp edge. Same thing with uh, this bad boy. It uh, did a little limbing and a little executive work on the tree there, and it's still razor sharp, no problems with the edge, so. Happy with the way the axe is.